Hello YouTube, Chrome Freak here. H&R Model 650, Harrington and Richardson. I just did a video on the history of the company. I was gonna try to do the little review or show and tell on the revolver at the same time I did the history video, but I thought a lot of you guys would be so bored to death with the history video, you wouldn't even stick around to watch, watch the little show and tell review on it. So I figured I'd go ahead and separate them. And I've done that. There's not a, really a whole lot to say about this revolver. We'll go over everything there is to say about it, except to say that it's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. As my name implies, chrome freak. I love the polished stainless steel or a chrome look. And this is a nickel finish on this revolver, but it's very be beautiful, very well done. Machine work on it is just, it's, especially for a pistol that was not cheap but very affordable they call it the working man's pistol revolver they call it the working man's um h and r the working man's firearms and they called it that because they were very um affordable they made them that way these were made to shoot they're very tough built and i'm not talking about just this revolver i'm talking about basically every firearm that harrington and richardson had, had their hand in on they um put a lot of pride into everything really and if you do some research on these and you read some stories that collectors have written about H&R, it's just that the company was just a fine company and they went after the working man. That was their goal was to build firearms for the working man to hunt, to defend himself with, to target shoot, whatever the case may be. And they kept it with affordability in mind, but also quality. Like I said, the machine work on this pistol is really absolutely beautiful. This came out brand new with a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $160. They were made between 1976 and 1985, right around the time the company went out of business, they were still making these. Unfortunately, when the new H&R 1871 took over, they stopped making revolvers. And there is quite a few models that H&R made. This is part of the Gunfighter series. And like I said, I just love the look of this cowboy pistol. I've always wanted a cowboy revolver, I keep saying pistol, revolver. And I've always wanted one. And I plan on getting a nice cowboy holster to put it in. The quick draw chrome freak. <laughs> no, I'm never going to be a great shot or a quick draw. But I do love to plink. And this is a great little plink, plinking revolver. As I said, I go out back. I can't shoot the magnum loads or even a long rifle here at the house. But these little calibres... It's like taking a BB gun outside seriously. They make hardly any noise at all. And it makes you, but you still gotta be safe with these. These will hurt you, these will kill you. 650 foot a second, I mean, they're not playing. And that's with no no, no um, gunpowder in there. It's absolutely amazing. It's just a high prime round. And it, it works out great because they don't make a whole lot of noise. And you can go out in your backyard as long as you set things up where you know where that round's gonna go. I'm not telling anybody to break the law, that's for sure. But where I live, I got nobody around me. So I'm safe, I could set it up where I could shoot where I'm kind of shooting down and I know I'm not gonna get any ricochets that are gonna go anywhere. I'm not gonna hit anything. You're, you're just not allowed, because I'm still in the city limits to shoot something like you know a Magnum round or any round that's gonna make any kind of noise for that matter. So, but BB guns are great. And that's about the same amount of noise you're gonna get out of these Calibres are awesome for that. Anyway, let's go over to the pistol a little bit. Like I said, it's a nickel finished, but a very well done nickel finished. Seriously, I put some flips on this thing and it just came to life, man. It's a beautiful little revolver. It's got walnut grips that are smooth. <clears throat> Although they are smooth, it, it's a 22 round. You don't really need a lot of um, jimping or whatever you want to call it around her to get a good purchase on this firearm. Just the shape, the shape of the grips themselves, by the way, it is empty. It's a side loader. You load it right there. You fold down this little door, spin it around. There is no loads in there. We'll go over replacing the cylinder because this is actually a convertible. So it comes with a second cylinder. This is a 22 long rifle. And in this bag, which by the way, I found out is the original bag. I wish I had the original box with this. I don't. But after um, doing my research online, this is the same bag that I'm seeing in pictures coming out of the original boxes. So this is the original bag that came with it. As far as I know it is. This is the 22 Magnum cylinder. As you can see, a 22 long rifle, 
I'm putting it backward, I'm sorry. 22 long rifle go in there and it's, it's got a little bit of wiggle. And as you'll see in a minute, I'll take the cylinder out of the 22 long rifle and you will not be able to put the magnum load in there. People ask me a lot, actually, I get a lot of questions like this. Can you shoot the long rifle through the magnum round, through the magnum cylinder? You know, you might get away with it, and you probably can, but what's going to happen is you're going to rupture these, these um, spent cases are going to rupture. And although it does have an ejector right here, it's just not good for it. I mean, use the right rounds for the, the proper size rounds for the popper, revolver, rifle, whatever you're using. You know, I mean, it's a 22 mag for a reason. There's a reason they gave you a 22 mag and a 22 long rifle. The mags won't even go in the long, long rifle cylinder at all. They won't fit. So, you know, please, people, use, you know, use the right loads. I get that question, you wouldn't even believe, especially with the Makarov rounds. I'm constantly getting, can you shoot a Makarov round in a, in a, in a 9 millimeter Luger gun or, or just the opposite. Just go with the size, the proper size it's supposed to be in there. Anyway, this has got a five and a half inch barrel. It's got a twin model, the 649. This is the 650. The only difference in them being, that's the blued version, and it's actually very beautiful too. I've seen quite a few pictures on it. It's a gorgeous revolver. It's a single action or double action. 95% of the time I'm shooting it in single action. I just love that single action pull. It's a very small pull. I need to put the um, scale on it. I actually have a, a trigger scale, but I loaned it out and I do not have it right now with me. In fact, I haven't had it for about a month and a half. I need to get that back. So I don't know. I'm gonna guess it's probably in single action. I don't wanna let it fly home because I don't have a snap cap in there and then any rim fire pistols or rifles you don't want to let this slam home you really don't so I'll just let it go off I'm gonna say it's probably less than three pounds on single action double action it's a it's a hard long pull and I just let it go off it's a long, long hard pull on double action at least 10 to 12 pounds I'm gonna guess the weight of this it's a pretty heavy revolver I don't have a scale, once again, so I, I really can't tell you exactly what it weighs. But you know you have a revolver in your hands, for, especially for a 22. you would think it'd be lighter. This is a very solid, well-made pistol. Like I said, side loader right here, your ejector. We'll put one in there, we're not even gonna close it up. Then make sure, it's got a half cock position, by the way, also. So, we'll go ahead and we'll put one of these Calibre rounds. You just throw it in there, and then your ejector, you would take it and the ejector comes clean out, I mean a good inch past the revolver in the back, past your cylinder. To remove the cylinder, we're going to press this button in right here, at the same time you're going to pull this pin out. So you can press the button, pull this pin right here out, let it fall out and the cylinder will come right out that quick, that easy. As you can see, it's a long rifle, the magnum round won't even go in there. So once you got this open, you can kind of get to the top of your trigger here. And you can see all your workings and it's beautiful now I do not know a whole lot about completely disassembling revolvers but guess what my curiosity has gotten the best of me and I've looked up and I found the schematic for this pistol believe it or not and I'm gonna be taking this completely down I'll probably do it a few times off the camera and then make a video on doing that I don't want to do it on video for the first time and it's not because it's embarrassing or anything like that I guarantee you I'm gonna mess up several times doing it and probably be on my hands and knees looking for little parts. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because I'm not a partner and I, I've only got 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, you don't have a whole lot of time to explain things and put things back together. So it's as simple as that. Um, anything else I want to tell you about this gun? Double action, single action, cowboy style, convertible. There's my running out of time. I was going to make a three or four minute video here. And with me, I can't stop running my mouth. Real quickly, I have a sub that would like me to take the Makarov, do a detail just like I did with the 1911, do a complete detailed strip disassembly and reassembly of it because he needs to change his sear out. And I'm gonna do that, I think. I don't think I'm gonna do it tonight, but I'm gonna do that in the next couple of nights. So if you could be patient with me, I wrote your name down and I've lost a piece of paper. I don't know where it is, but we'll get that done here in the next, within the next week. I'll make two videos, a disassembly and a reassembly. And real quickly, we'll get out of here. I also have had a few People want to see the tools I use to, I'm not no gunsmith people. I play with my own firearms and I do some cleaning on the side and parts changing on the side, but I'm not in any stretch of the imagination a gunsmith, not even close. 
but I have a lot of people wanting to know the tools that I use when I do disassemble and reassemble and clean and all that. And we'll go over that. That actually probably wouldn't be a bad video to do. And I'll do that also, hopefully this week. But I just wanted to show you guys this beautiful little revolver. It's awesome. It's a blast. It's fun to shoot. If you guys could find them for the way they're priced, under 150 bucks. Make sure you got both cylinders coming with it. Grab it, man. I'm telling you, grab it. You will not regret it. Okay, YouTube, I thank you for watching. Good night.